friends. Mm -mm -mm. Today is Friday, May 5th. Ooh, Cinco de Mayo. It's also my mom's birthday. Happy birthday, mom. She's not watching this. Anyway, Lori's lawyers. Oh, they had a triple espresso this morning. They got up. They had all of their coffee and some caffeine pills and possibly some Starbucks on the way into work because they came to play. Um, previously in this trial, they had been quiet and retiring and just like, um, please don't execute my client. Thank you so much. Oh, no, 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 no. Now today they brought all the sass. First thing in the morning, they were like, now I'm summarizing, but you'll get the idea. They were like, mm. Ian Pulowski. Yeah, he's married to her niece, but um, we don't trust him. And so the state was like, Your Honor, uh, he's a good dude. And the judge was like, go on, defense. What do you have to say? They were like, first of all, he's a snitch. He married this girl after only dating her for 35 seconds. Then he secretly recorded tapes and he's just a snitch. And you know, snitches get stitches. We don't trust him. This is my summary of what they said. And the state was like, we are offended that you are calling him a snitch. Yes, he recorded two weeks worth of recordings for the FBI of his new wife that he knew for two seconds and just married, but that doesn't make him a snitch. That makes him a good citizen. And the judge was like, let me think about it. Yeah, nah, he can testify, but you can't play the tapes. And so apparently the defense was like, we want to play these tapes because this tapes, these tapes prove these were just nice people who had a mild-mannered cult and they provided a blessing, but the tapes don't say go out and kill somebody. The tapes just showed them as nice, humble, religious people. So ultimately, the tapes were not allowed in. Ian Pulowski took the stand. This is what I wonder. What is Lori thinking? Lori gave her blessing for her delightful niece, mm who is weak-minded, who did not need to be brainwashed. A light rinse got it done for her. She don't seem that emotionally stable or mentally stable, but who am I to judge? We have not met her yet. Though, I have seen the recordings of her defending her auntie. Um, I want to know what she says now, but we'll get to her soon. Anyway, Ian Pulowski takes the stand, and he's annoyed, and... Uh, Oof, I'm just dying to know what Lori thinks of him. So everybody asked him questions. And basically he was like, these people are a bunch of manipulators. He is full on Captain Sabaho. He sees himself as some sort of superhero in this situation. This is what I'm concerned about for his marriage. Not that his marriage is my business. It is not. He has been married to this woman for three and a half years and it has been nonstop chaos. It sounds like, yeah, they had a baby and that's all good. But you know those girls or humans, it's not just women. There are some humans who just live in chaos. They thrive in chaos. When there's no chaos around, well, they feel quite empty. I get the feeling that Melanie Pulowski is a chaos girl. She's a chaos human. Um, mm -mm. I do not deal well with chaos. You know, there's like chaos Muppets and order Muppets. I th forget who came up with that theory. But the um, unified theory of Muppetry, that's a thing you can go on and Google and look it up. She is very definitely a chaos Muppet, as is Lori. The state in this case, they are order Muppets. They have all their ducks in a row. They prefer their ducks in a row. They prefer their life nice and quiet not Lori and them. I get the feeling that Lori was raised in chaos. Her niece was raised in chaos. She raised her kill children in chaos and she had a whole chaos cult. And so now this chaos cult has landed her in prison, probably for life. Anyway, Ian got up there and he just threw shade on the whole family. He was like, Lori and Chad were manipulating my delightful weak-willed wife and um she was crying every time a stick broke and they were like oh let's give you a blessing she knew or should have known that these kids were dead and she was like um but my crazy auntie said they probably weren't dead even though i think they were dead we probably in danger we should hide that's not exactly what she said, but that's the general idea of what she said. So um, he got up, said whatever, and then the defense got up and basically attacked him, which, I mean, you can't blame him because he just threw all kinds of dirt on Lori and Chad. And so the defense got up there and was like, uh, listen, weren't these nice people? Didn't they just say a prayer? Didn't they constantly give blessings? He was like, well, blessings were flying around like flies. I don't know. Everybody was blessing everybody for everything. Everything. And then he mentioned that he gave his wife a blessing of comfort. 
What does that mean? LDS friends, I'm going to need y'all to weigh in again. What is the deal with the blessings? I know that men get some sort of like priesthood, power, authority, whatever, to give people blessings. And I guess maybe the one upside of Lori's cult, if there is an upside of a murder cult, is that they allowed women to also give blessings. Because apparently, according to what I read, Lori was out here in these streets applying blessings to people. Can women give blessings in the traditional LDS church? I don't know how that works. But um, her husband, Ian Pulowski, gave Melanie a blessing of comfort when, when uh, Al died. Um, they should have been having a blessing of celebration because honestly, I guarantee you, if Al was still alive, oh, he would have killed Ian Pulowski. She would, and Melanie would have been like, why do my husbands keep getting shot at? That must be the Holy Spirit. Because you know she would have just bought any pile of mess that she was being sold. So Ian took the stand. He was hostile to Lori. I imagine that Lori was trying to like use her power and her eyes to make him burst into flames on the stand. But he did not because quiet as is kept, she doesn't have any power. She has even less power now that she's tucked away over there in prison. So when it was time for him to leave, the state was like... Thank you so much for proving our point that these people are evil. And her defense was just like, um, we need to subpoena him because we don't think he's going to come back and testify. We're going to use him in our rebuttal case. Ooh, I'm dying to hear what their rebuttal case says. What is their defense? She didn't kill that many people. It wasn't that bad. I don't know. So the defense attorneys were very, very hostile. I guess, towards Ian. And so um, they were like, we got a pocket full of subpoenas and we're going to give him one right now because we don't think he's going to come back here to help us. And Ian's lawyer was there and he was like, oh, if you got some paperwork, we'll take your paperwork because Ian is not scared. Yeah, Ian can be real brave now because all of the evildoers are locked in jail. Except for, this is the thing that I noticed. So there's like traditional LDS documents, which is like, say your prayers and be prepared. Okay, I think every, every religion calls it different things, but most of them say that, like say your prayers and be prepared. The LDS folks take it to a next level of like, have a lot of food storage or whatever. I imagine they did fantastic in um, during the pandemic. Oh, they was good. Our LDS friends, they were fully prepared. They had three months worth of food, 10 years worth of toilet paper. Their behinds were all clean and dry while the rest of us were running around trying to make homemade toilet paper. Anyway, but then there's like the next level of like the apocalypse is happening next week. You better get ready. And then the next level of that of we're going to help the apocalypse come along. How come folks that always want to help the apocalypse no, some people say like, oh, a race war is coming or this terrible thing is coming or that terrible thing is coming. It don't need your help. Why, why does the apocalypse need your help? The apocalypse to me, if it's truly ap apocalyptic, it don't need your help. You don't need to move to Rexburg. You don't need to shoot a bunch of people to start a race war. And this is nothing new. Wasn't Charlie Manson trying to help the apocalypse along? Oh, I'm going to get things kicked off and then things are going to go crazy. Boo, you don't have that much power. You're going to control the entire world. So you're going to do this one act and then everything is going to fall down. Mm -mm. Uh, news to you, the earth has been around for millions of years. Ain't even, your help for you got here. It's not going to need your help after it's gone. We good. So go on and stack your toilet paper and your dried beans or whatever you're going to do. And just like go on and, and be ready, but say your prayers. Like, I do not get why people believe these things. Number one. Okay. People can believe whatever they want. Why do others believe it? I don't get it. And what I'm learning from this whole thing, from this case, a vow, which is a voice of warning. What you warning me about? Calm down. All of these groups seem to consist of thousands of people who hold these beliefs and then they just splinter off and go in another direction. Julie Rowe, who was like some creepy sci-fi author and all these other Chad Day Daybell affiliated people. It's a whole bunch of people who believe this stuff and they are laying low. Now, as they watch this case unfold, are they like, see, I was right. This is the beginning of the end. Or are they like, ooh, I have been deceived. I I would love, to, okay, um, cult members, if any of y'all are secret watch, secretly watching this, even if you're not subscribed, shoot me a little message and just let me know what you're thinking now. Because if you were over there stacking your toilet paper, getting your dry beans together, whatever, and then your leader gets sent to prison for murder, what do you do then? You, you distribute your beans? You give up the, the saving of stuff? Or do you just quietly go on waiting for the apocalypse? I am dying to know. Listen, I'm, I'm a 
prepared person in that um, I know how to do things. In a zombie apocalypse, oh, you want to be standing next to me. I know how to build things. I cook. I sew. I knit. Look, I even spin on a loom. Oh, I'm knocking things over. This is my electric loom. But I have a traditional loom, the wooden kind, like old-fashioned 1800 style. I think I posted a, a picture of it over in the community tab a little while ago. But like, I know how to do things. I make yogurt, I bake bread, I can fix my car. Well, that's probably a lie. We gonna have to walk in the apocalypse, but I do have a bike and I did change the tires out on it so we can bike. But fixing my car, I know how to put that blue fluid in that makes the windows clean. That's about it. If I get a flat tire child, I'm like, uh, hello, AAA, hello, roadside. That is why the Lord gave me roadside assistance so I didn't have to dirty myself changing a tire. Also, my husband watched a YouTube video once on how to change a tire and he got the tire changed and it didn't fall off the car as I drove it to the mechanic to be like, can you check this and see if he changed the tire right? Because I love my husband. He is a delightful man. Handy, he is not. But he did put the, when I got a flat, he put the spare on and then I drove the car three blocks to the mechanic and had him fix the thing and check the spare and check my tire because Lord knows my very cute husband, mm -mm, he had me out here dead in the three blocks trying to get to the mechanic shop. Anyway, so um, what level of preparation are these scaredy cats doing? Oh, was that slanderous? Are, are these very prepared people? What y'all doing now? I just, I just need to know. Now, Melanie Pulaski was supposed to testify, I guess today. Now I'm not even sure if she's gonna testify. We know that she was watching trial coverage. We know that she is easily influenced. We know that her mind is weak. Um, why is, how your mind get weak like that? Like I was defiant even as a child. I was probably defiant as an infant. My mother said for the first year of my life, all I did was cry. That seems about right. Cause you know, I was like, these sheets are scratchy. What are you doing here? I'm hungry. So, um, I don't know what that's about, but I was not one of these get along to go along people. Now, if you doing what I want you to do, oh, I'll go right along with that. Everything I want. Oh yeah, no problem. I got no problem with that. But um, if you got thoughts and ideas on how I should run my life, mm, you gonna get a little pushback on that because I'm not that compliant. I guess the world needs some more Melanie Pulaski's who go along to get along. Because if everybody was like me, that would be a little much. But um. Until then, it is what it is. So they have not mentioned old Melanie at all in this trial again. So we'll see if she testifies. There's some FBI agent that came up and uh, the state was like, yes, we have a dictionary size mountain of evidence that he would like to submit. And yes, he put some opinions in it and a lot of sass. And he was like, this is why they're terrible. And this is also why they're terrible. And this is why they should go to prison. And the defense was like, B, please, you not putting that up here. That's not exactly what he said, but that's the spirit of what he said. And then the judge is like, I have looked at it and this um, document that you've submitted, it is full of shade and um, shade is not admissible in a court of law in Iowa, Idaho, Iowa, what? oh gosh, Idaho, potatoes, Idaho. Um, shade is not admissible in a court of law in Idaho. So I'm going to need you to remove the shade and the sass and the opinion, and then you could resubmit the document. But you better do it quick, fast, and in a hurry because I'm not giving you a lot of extra time because you knew or should have known that this is a mess. And so the state was like, yes, your honor. Um, here's the thing. Even when these lawyers were being sassy to each other and the judge had opinions, everybody was calm and relaxed. I had it turned up to 2X speed and they still seemed relatively calm. When I was like, wait, are they mellow even when they have attitude? So I dropped it down to normal speed. Number one, it sounded like everybody was drunk and moving in slow motion. Number two, I was like, how is it humanly possible to talk this slow? I feel like maybe they just recorded the people at normal sleep speed and then slowed it down for the rest of us. This trial probably could have been done in two weeks if these people didn't talk so doggone slow. I, I do not understand. Anyway. So um, I will continue watching them at 2X. Um, if you have not already gone and subscribed, because I was looking at my analytics the other day, now that I discovered you can look at analytics. Hey, South Africa. Hey, New Zealand. It's people from around the world watching this foolishness. I'm embarrassed, embarrassing myself internationally now. I thought possibly that this little madness that I call a YouTube channel might reach all the way to Iowa. 
Idaho, ayahuasca, over there in the Pacific Northwest. Um, I didn't know it was going to other countries. Hey, other countries, I am not a representation of all of America. I'm not trying to embarrass the whole country. I'm satisfied just in embarrassing those from Northern New Jersey because I represent us very well, in my opinion. Anyway, hello to everybody. I see that 50% of people who watch this channel are not subscribed. I honestly have no idea what the benefits are of subscribing. I'm relatively new to this, so things you should know about me, I do not know how to edit. Um, all of these videos are done in one take. I just run my mouth. I don't know. I'm a little bit tech savvy, not super tech savvy. So if I say something wrong, it just kind of stays in because I don't know how to take it out. And um, I have no idea what the benefit of subscribing is. No clue. But everybody else's videos say subscribe and drop a comment and follow. Do you follow? Is that this platform or is that another platform? Child, I don't even know. Anyway, um, if you like the thing I'm doing, subscribe if you want to. Otherwise, I'll just see you next time. Bye.